And our assignment from, from this, this time was to bring the presence of God. I'm like, wow, that's a pretty tall order. God shows up when he wants to. <laughs> you know, he does what he wants to. So one of the things I'm doing, if you know, I've been down the street and I'm talking on storms. I do series. And I'm writing a book on storms. And so I'm going to be doing the storm book and getting the material to write the book as I'm preaching to you guys. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit different for you in that I want you to realize God's presence in the storm. Amen. You see, we all have storms. Yeah. We all have storms. We all have issues in our life. We, we all get tired. We all get, we all get whatever we get to, to have the enemy come in and just, we just think it's always the enemy coming in and rousing up stuff and causing storms to come in, my, in your life. But do you know when God's in the storm? Do you actually know God produces storms? Wouldn't it be nice to know if the storm you're in is from God or the devil? Yeah. Because you can't kick God out. You can't say, get out in the name of Jesus. He says, I am Jesus. <laughs> now what you going to do? <laughs> what you going to do then? Let me give you some scriptures so y'all don't think I'm just crazy. I know I am crazy. <laughs> I heard y'all. Proverbs 10.25. Proverbs 10.25. When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. Woo. Yes. So, so when the storms of life, there's going to be some storms coming in your life. The Proverbs tell you, but will you handle the storm like the wicked or the righteous? We be handling our storms like the wicked. We get into that hard time, you be like, give me a hit, bro. Let me just have a cigarette. That cigarette will calm me down. Let me just get this magazine. That girl look good. And let me go over here to the girls. Let me come over to your vices. I'm not just going to pick on them. Y'all got some vices. Y'all be in them books, too. I'm an equal opportunity employer, OK? To storms. You either fall or you have a foundation. Yeah. These are two outcomes you're going to get from the storm. Are you going to fall in it? Or are you going to be found and get a foundation so strong that no matter what the wind blows, no matter how it goes, you're going to move, but you will not break. Yeah. Just, just blow. Oh, I'm like the matrix. <laughs> There are, we expect the wicked to fall, but why are we so, so many righteous and God-fearing people falling? You love God. You believe God. You want God. But you just keep tripping by the same wind, by the same sound, by the same thing. Why is that? The text actually tells you why the godly have not been built on the foundation. How have we built our foundation? And, and it's an acronym of blood. This is how we've built the foundation on blood. Broken relationship, broken promises, and broken families. You see, because our families are broken, because we have broken relationships, and because someone made a promise to us and broke, our foundation is shaken. God can't be real. Well, I, she said she loved me for all my life, but, 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 but why did she leave me? You, you, you're broken. And you don't know how to get fixed in the store when you're broken. And so you begin to use your own things to get fixed. You don't call on God. You're not righteous at that because you're broken. Oh, but if that don't get you, yeah. lost hope. Lost position and lost 
God's family. See, if the broken family don't get, you, your family can be broke but still together. But once it's broken, lost, they left you. And you are so far gone that you don't believe that it can ever be restored. Yeah, We're talking about storms, guys. Right. We're talking about storms. And these are storms that come into the life of the righteous. How do you respond when you lost hope? When you lost that person that you thought would be your boo forever? <laughs> Another one. Oh, open doors. Your past pains, your past problems. You got open doors. I know it hurt when you got raped. I know it hurt when daddy left you. I know it hurt because you don't even know who daddy is. And so you open the door. I don't know how to be a man because my daddy wasn't around to show me. So I'll just be the best man I can by sleeping with everybody. I'll be the best woman I can by giving out everything I have. That will prove that somebody loves me. Open doors. Yes. Okay, We're talking about storms, guys. Storms that happen not to the wicked, to the righteous. Because we fall. Because of sin. Oh, we overextend ourselves. We overextend our accounts. We overextend our commitments. We're not loyal to anything because we overextend ourselves. Will you do this? Yeah, I'll do it. And you shut and you not even anywhere to be found. No loyalty. No honor. But you, you say you call on the name of the Lord and you got this foundation. Then how come your yes is a yes and amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Destruction, deep, blood, deep. Destructive tendencies and habits and hang-ups. I keep telling y'all, when, when we do do deliverance, it's not your addiction that's killing you. That's right. Come on. It's that little boy, it's that little girl that was so broke that you don't even know how to find her or him. It was a situation that was done long before. Yeah, I know your mama could have put beer in your bottle. But come on, you 60 years old now. You still blame a mama for a bottle, man. Get off of her. I won't say it because we're on Facebook. <coughs> got kids in the audience. You got to be, understand. <laughs> you got to grow up. You, we can't keep blaming mama and daddy for our issues. Right. When are we going to take account for our own stuff? Right. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it shouldn't have been done. But the blood still works. The blood still works. Amen. We're talking about storms, guys. If we take all of these things into account, we build up ungodly allegiances and our blood begins to be the sacrifice instead of the blood of Jesus. We become the sacrifice. We start to walk in pride. We start to walk in self-sufficiency. We start to walk in this hardness. Y'all know my name was Rock. Ain't nobody gonna mess with Rock. I'm hard. You think you can hurt me? Just try me. And on the outside, I looked hard as stone. But on the inside, I was mush. See, some of y'all are mush. But y'all can't show it because you got this exterior that you're trying to put on for somebody. But everybody knows you're liars. And you're talking about storms. How can you begin to weather storms in life and not be shaken? Do you actually know? next door? Are you going to party your way out? Are you, you going to go to Granny? Granny! <laughs> and that's just what Granny going to say. <laughs> <laughs> See, we got to learn to call on God in the storm. So this year we're going to be covering storms. But I want you to understand there's three initiators of the storm. And I want you to understand this. And I'm going to show you to you in Scripture. God's storms. That's going to be the first one. It says in Isaiah 29, 5 and 6. But suddenly, the ruthless enemies will be crushed like the finest of dust. Your many attackers will be driven away like chaff. That means if your attackers are going to be driven away, that means you were attacked. That you were under attack. 
that something was happening in your life that your enemies, everything that you stood, that stood against you was attacking you. And now God is stepping in and said, I will drive your attackers away. Suddenly, in an instant, the Lord of heaven's armies will act for you with thunder and earthquake and great noise and with a whirlwind and storms and consuming fire. That's God's story. God's storms come to change the course of action when you become obedient. So your disobedience may have triggered the storm, but as soon as you turn and get obedient, God says, no, she's mine. Get your hands off her. She's mine. He's mine. Get your hands off of her. And the same enemy that was trying to destroy you, God is raising up and he's going to kick on your behalf. But he's got to get you shaken up. He got, he got to get you shaken up. Sudden suffer, we suffer because of disobedience to God. When we disobey God, you will suffer a storm. And, it is, and until you become obedient in the storm, then God will turn some stuff around. Obedience can change the storm so God's enemies are consumed by the storm that was set for you. Come on. That very same storm that you were sitting in. When you be saying, when you begin to say, God, I trust you. God, I believe in you. God, I know it's you. I'm sorry for what I did. God says, I hear my child calling from, get back, devil. Get back. I'm pushing you off and your enemies will be consumed by fire. By fire. That's right. Okay, for the three or four of y'all to raise your hand, start being obedient. That's right. Yes. See, obedience is going to cost you a sacrifice. Yes. Come on. It's, it's going to be hard to be obedient. Yes. Uh -huh. Mercy comes upon us, and God rescues us and destroys our enemy. So that's how you know it's a God story. Your obedience will get you the enemy off of you. And what about storms of men? This comes from 2 Peter 2 and 17. Such men are dried up springs, clouds driven before the storm, and they are doomed to utter darkness. So this is talking about people who are false teachers, who lead you the wrong way, people who say like, I'm Christian, and they're doing all the wrong thing. They just say they are a follower, but really aren't. And so they got all the stuff on, and you think that you're following someone that's holy, yeah. and you're actually following someone that's holy. Yeah. <laughs> then you enter into a storm of men. Their issues become your issues. Their faults become your fault because you did not discern the enemy. You did not discern if that word was good. I'm giving you scripture. And if I misquoted, apostle, you said it wrong. Correct it. You have to understand. I told the team this morning. It's not about discerning right from wrong. It's easy to do that. What's hard to do is discern what's almost right. <laughs> because when it's almost right, it looks good. Sounds good and it feels good, so it must be right. And it's a lie. <sighs> These are storms of men. You suffer because of other people's disobedience. See, the first storm was because of your disobedience. Now, this storm is because of other people's disobedience. Now, you just tag along. You're becoming a follower or a man, so therefore, you enter the storms of man. People who are wicked or those who walk in pride lead you astray, so you suffer. You know pride, how you can get yourself out of the situation. You, you, you know, you, you fell, but I'm, I'm bigger than this. I, I, I should know better than this. You're not calling on God, you're calling on I. And those pride storms, those pride things will lead you to a fall. When God delivers you from men, 
and you choose to go back and live the lie and live out of the lie, you begin to uh, to walk in darkness with the men. But all you have to do is turn. You know, repentance changes the course of the storm. Repentance is not just changing your mind. Repentance is also walking away. You can be sorry for a lot of stuff. You can be really sorry that you're in this program. <laughs> but hey, man, that's not going to change you. Ch change doesn't come because you're sorry. Change comes because you, not change doesn't even come because you consider changing your mind. Change comes when you change your actions. You have to be a doer of the word. Not just a hearer. I know what I'm doing is wrong. Everybody in this room know y'all doing is wrong. You know it. And you know you don't want to do it. But yet, you still are in the storm. Because you're not doing. You're just thinking. You have to do what the word says. So change the course of the storm by walking and seeking truth. God says the truth will set you free. Yes. When you're following a lie, the way out of the storm is what's the truth? What's the truth about this situation? What's the truth about my dad walking away? You believe the lie that you weren't worth it. You believe the lie that you were raped so many times as a, as a kid because you were not beautiful. You believe that lie. But the truth is, you were so beautiful, the enemy tried to rape you and defame you so that you wouldn't know how much you are a part of a royal priesthood. That you are a part of something that can't be shaken. That you are a part of something bigger than what was done to you because God put something in you so he can work through you. But if you believe the lie, the truth me telling you that you're beautiful, you won't believe. The truth, guys, I'm telling you that you're whole. You won't believe it. Why? Because the facts show that you're broken. But facts are never true. See, truth, the truth will set you free. Storms of men. Last storm. Storms of sin. Now, this is what everybody expects the evil storm. The devil made me do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. That they make you do it. Oh, come on. <laughs> and it says here, this is this is how I know the devil didn't make you do it. Proverbs 1, 25 and 28. Uh -huh. This tells you, you ignored my advice yeah. and rejected the correction I offered. This is God. So I will laugh when you are in trouble. I will mock you when disaster overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm. <laughs> when disaster engulfs you like a cyclone. All walking in confusion. That's the cyclone. <laughs> and anguish and distress overwhelm you. When they cry for help, I will not answer. Through the, though they are anxious and search for me, they will not find me. <clears throat> because you ignored God. Because you ignored his truth. Don't go that way. Oh, I'm going to ignore that. Don't, don't do that. I'm going to ignore that. God said, okay. You want to do it your way? I won't hear you. Now you're in this program wondering why God is not listening to your prayer. Could it be? He's ignoring you. Uh, so that the enemy can kind of shake you out there for a minute. Because this is sin. This is sin. Yeah, you can repent. Yes, you can turn. Yes, you, but God's got to get your attention. And sometimes the only way that we get our, and he gets our attention is to let the enemy ravish us. We suffer because we ignore and we reject God. There is no God. Okay, here comes a storm. There is no truth. Every truth is relative. Okay. You believe that. Wait for your storm. Now, I don't care what the world says. There is a truth. 
You may not believe there's a truth, but it doesn't really matter what you believe. The truth is there is truth. And when you ignore it, it becomes a storm. Go. God will allow your life to be overtaken so you are distressed and your bondage crushes you. The bondage that you're in right now, the captivity that you're in, is crushing. And, and I know this is supposed to be a message about the presence of God, but I want to put a pin here. Deliverance is not about getting the bondage and stuff away from you. Some people, some of you guys are looking so much for deliverance that you've lost sight of the deliverer. Amen. You see, it's the deliverer that you should desire. Yes. You're looking for the deliverance so that you can release the pain. And once the pain is relieved, you're going to go right back into your ditch. See, because you didn't yearn after the delivery. You didn't learn after the most high. You didn't want to be in the presence of God. You just didn't want the devil to continue to ravish you. Different motivation. You won't get stay free in that motivation. But if you're motivated by seeing God, no demon in hell can shake loose. You must desire the presence of God. And this is what Brian wants for you guys. He wants you to desire the presence. He wants you to understand what it looks like to be in the presence of God. He wants you to understand what it feels like to see his glory. Because when you see his glory, when you see your story changes, some of you need to stop crying out for deliverance and say, God, show me your glory. Show me your presence. Give me some fire, God. I want you. I know these issues are all on me, but I want you. Through my issues. Now that's a desire that God will put fire to. So, can we identify who initiated the storm you're in right now? Just gave you some pointers. You're in a storm. Who's initiated it? <laughs> Do you know how to get out? Can we see God wants to build a foundation in you? In our storms, God wants you to focus on him. He wants you to focus on your calling instead of focusing on your falling. Yeah. See, some of you are so worried about your falling that you've given up your calling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God doesn't need you to be all perfect to, to accept the call because I'm jacked up, guys. <laughs> Let me tell you. Look. Now, he's using a jacked up sister like me. <laughs> I'm telling you, he can use me and he can use a donkey. Come on. Uh, you got to have something. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> so there are several storm factors we're going to give in. We're going to talk about storms that remove God's glory. That's what we're going to be talking about. Stubbornness, stealing credit, serving idols, skepticism, which is in the room, by the way. I'm saying this for the second time because I hear you. Yeah. This stuff isn't true. Yeah. Man, why don't she shut up? This stuff is just, I, I did this when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, this is just a bunch of bull. What, what, look at my tongue. Look. Skeptic. You can't get the glory of God when you're walking in skepticism and then sin. You, you will never see the glory of God. How does God's glory reveal, though? It's, it's revealed in the sky. It's revealed in sickness. It's revealed in salvation. It's revealed when we stand in our trial. It's revealed when we stand in hope. It shines in darkness. Do you actually understand that you can be in the middle of darkness and see the glory of God? Yeah. Ooh, you can stand to minister. You, you, that, that's going to show the glory of God. When you stand up to minister, it means you're, like you're telling your testimony. You, you, you're telling people where you've been, how you've been through. That's a ministry that God can shine his glory on you through that. But you know what the devil does? He says this. This is what he says to your troubles. Shh. Touched. Don't don't tell because if you tell, they won't look at you right. If if you tell, you're not gonna be a man. 
If you tell, I'm going to come back and get your family. Mm. Yeah, he's a liar. He's a harasser. And because you don't tell your story, the darkness consumes you. But when you begin to tell, the glory of God begins to shine and there's a light that comes from you. You just begin free because now you drop it and you understand what the enemy said. Do you understand? This is how I realized this truth. God, the enemy told me a long time that I was going to die by I was 30. So I live reckless. I'm fulfilling, right? And so I was, I did everything that I could to die. I had a death wish all my life. By the time I was 35, he told me I was going to be dead by 30. It took me to 35 to realize I wasn't dead. <laughs> See, that's how dark I was. It took me five years past my death date to realize I wasn't going to die, but I was already dead. And so I had to find out how to live because if I found out, if he lied to me about that one, what else did he lie to me about? I wanted to find the truth was because I was tired of living in darkness. I was created for light. I tell you, I can see light. When I close my eyes, I don't see darkness anymore because light brings forth out of me. I tell you, I wasn't light. Uh, and I tell you, the light is on the inside of you. God can turn it around for you if you just flick it on. <laughs> yeah. Flick it on. Give you testimony. It ain't gotta be deep. You don't need three languages in Hebrew and Spanish. Nope. <laughs> Just tell it wrong. <laughs> Do you know God's glory shows up in a sound? See, that's how come music is so important. If, if you can, okay, you listen to sounds of darkness. And it gets you moving in a certain way, or, or it gets your it gets your, your your mind in a certain way. You're giving glory to the wrong sound. <coughs> Just like there's demonic sounds, there are heavenly sounds that will take you away. You've got to learn to listen to the sound when the enemy is coming in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put on some worship music. Just put on some worship music, and you begin to sing, "Oh, unto the Lord." You begin to hear a sound. That will begin, the enemy will say, stop that music, shut it off, because of the sound. That's where God's glory comes. Okay, I, I, I'm, almost out, I, I'm almost out of town. I'm, I'm almost out of 20 minutes. So this year, we're going to explore these storms. Exodus 33, 14 through 18 says this, and the Lord answered, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. There's a little indication of being in the glory of God, in the presence of God, you have rest. If your presence doesn't go with us, Moses replied, don't lead us from here. For how then can it be known that your people and I have found favor in your sight? Unless you go with us. How else will they distinguish from all the other peoples on the face of the earth, how are they going to distinguish you as a Christian? If God doesn't go with you, if you don't walk in his presence, how are they going to know? So the Lord said, Moses, I will do this very thing. As you have asked, I will, you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Then Moses says, please, show me your glory. That was one of the songs they sang, the glory of God. I pray that God show somebody the glory, that they, that they would see your glory today in this message. Yes, Lord God. How can we recognize the presence of God? It's by the blood. But it's not by your blood. It's by his blood. The same way as the wicked, the righteous can save by the same acronym, blood. Okay, so the fallen, remember, this is how they live by self-sacrifice. And we said blood was broken, lost, open doors, overextending ourselves, and destruction. They live according to their own standards. And what this text is saying, they're not led by God. They go left. They don't, they not, they're not 
um, they're looked upon bad, badly and they have no likeness of God. That's what the wicked or those that are ungodly look like. But now, how do you find foundation in his presence? By the blood of Jesus Christ. And how do you find the blood? First, you get born again. That's the B. Second, you got to love God. That's the L. Third, you got to obey God. That's the O. Oh, you got to occupy. See, it's no use getting deliverance if you don't occupy. You've got to occupy your deliverance. You just can't say, oh, I'm free, and then go back to your crap. No, no. You got to occupy that land. That's right. Y'all hey, know what that's like. You get free, free for seven years, then something happens, and you're right back in the dump again because of one cent triggered you. Triggered you. Now, you got to occupy that territory. That's right. And then D is deliverance. That's the blood. Whose blood are you living by? Your own? Or well, Christ? According to this text, foundation in his presence, this is how you'll know you're in his presence. You are living by God's standard. Whose standard are you living by? Okay? You will have rest. How many of you can't sleep? You're not in his presence. You will have rights in the kingdom. See, and you will know your rights because you, you have authority. Yes. I walk in authority of God because I know whose I am. Yes. I don't walk in authority because of my title, because of my, nothing else. It's because God said that I have authority in the kingdom. And because I have authority, things can get pushed back. Yes. That's right. That's right. But you see, if you don't know who you are, you get pushed back. Uh -huh. Everything pushing you back, you just living in a ditch. Yeah. <laughs> and the last one. You have a relationship with God. Yes. When you have that, God says, I'll do that for you. Right. I'll show you my glory. Yes, Lord. You want to enter into God's glory? Yeah. Enter into the blood yes. of Jesus. Yeah. And stop sacrificing yourself. Yes. The only entity that requires a self-sacrifice is demons. They want you to sacrifice your blood or somebody else's blood on the altar. But that will never bring you freedom. Only the blood of Jesus will set the captives free. God, I pray for your glory to show forth in your people. Those that do not know you, God, I pray this is their prayer tonight. Not, not for the deliverance. Not for healing. But I pray that they ask you this. God, show me your glory. <laughs> show me your glory. Show me who you are. I want to rest tonight in you. I want a relationship with you. I want to know my rights in the kingdom. Because I feel like I have no rights. I'm being dominated. And God, you said I'm supposed to have dominion. God, I pray that if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that wants the presence of God, that they will stand and, God, you breathe on them. <laughs> breathe on them. Breathe on them new life. Breathe on them newness. Breathe on them refreshing. God, show them your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.